The Streisand effect refers to a situation involving the singer Barbara Streisand, where she ended up suing a photographer for taking photos of wealthy areas of Los Angeles or somewhere thereabouts that ended up inadvertently capturing an image of her house. So Barbara Streisand decided to sue that photographer so that he would take down the image, and what we ended up finding out through the court documents was that about three people had downloaded the image, including one random person, Barbara Streisand, and Barbara Streisand's attorney. However, after the lawsuit, after the news, and all of that, because she tried to cover it up, millions of people had looked at this guy's photos that otherwise would not have seen it because it was unlabeled, because people thought to themselves, well, if Barbara Streisand is trying to hide how nice her house is, I definitely gotta get a look at Barbara Streisand's house. Well, we're experiencing one of those kind of effects with a person called Eliza Blue. Now, I had no idea who this person was. I know some of you are going to say she's been on TimCast and all these other shows, but the thing is, I actually don't watch a broad swath of other people's content because I'm focused on making my own stuff, and I tend not to watch outside of some exemptions, which I share with you on this channel, people on my side because I don't want their opinions to pollute my opinion and thus I end up inadvertently repeating their exact same talking points. I'm far more interested in watching the opposing side, so I never actually heard of this person until the situation that we're going to talk about today actually occurred. But before we get into that, this video is sponsored, so let me chuck it to the sponsor, two-handed chuck right there, bring it back over here, and we'll discuss the whole thing on the other side. You feel like you're losing a battle against the dreaded holiday weight? Well, guess what? You're not alone because 52% of Americans have weight loss as a goal for the new year, meaning you're in the same boat with over half the adults in this country. And one of the best ways that you can actually get started on working on that holiday weight is by going over to KetoWithJustice.com and getting this amazing keto power. This will help raise your ketones, discourage your cravings, suppress your appetite, and help you drop those LBs that over half the Americans are looking to drop this year in 2023. And you can get this for 51% off our special holiday weight discount for this month alone. Alone, and there's a 60 day money back guarantee so try it if you don't feel like it's doing anything for you just send it back for a full refund that's keto with justice.com what's the website keto with justice.com so eliza blue is somebody who is a person on the internet that apparently talks a lot about human trafficking based on the idea that she at one point in her life was the victim of said human trafficking. Now, you can understand with the whole Jeffrey Epstein taking up a ton of real estate on my side of the aisle, why somebody like this would have a meteoric rise to fame and end up going on a bunch of different podcasts and essentially become a mainstay at times at a show like Timcast IRL. However, this attention, this meteoric rise often leads into people looking into you. And when you have sketchy things in your past, those things tend to come out. And one of the people who ended up discovering this, or at least one of the people who has a platform that ended up discovering this, was one Brittany Venti. Now, full disclosure, I've actually met Brittany Venti one time. I didn't really get a lot of time to talk to her or anything like that, but I have nothing against her. However, she didn't follow me on Twitter, which must mean that she absolutely hates me. So the bias that I have based on the fact that Brittany Venti hates me is going to skew all the coverage going forward. One of the things that Brittany Venti ended up finding and sharing on social media that kind of started this whole controversy was a still image from a music video that was then publicly available on YouTube featuring Elijah Blue dressed as a girl is typically dressed in a music video in a very adult sexualized way. Now I'm not showing you the image because Elijah Blue has resulted to privacy complaints and all manner of methods of censorship in order to prevent anything related to her past that she doesn't want from coming out. But the premise of this image being shared is actually not even that solid from Brittany Venti. Now, I know she actually has a lot more information on the backstory that you should definitely look into for yourself. But the idea that somebody, because they were in a music video that's adult-oriented later in life, is somehow not a victim of human trafficking on its own, which a lot of people take the image without all the backstory and information that Brittany Venti brings to the table and make leaps off of that 
is actually a really terrible argument, and it could have easily been knocked down by Elijah Blue, because what typically happens with people who are sexualized in a way against their will is that when they grow up, they end up trying to take control over that, and they don't act exactly in this linear way that you think that they would. So if I were Elijah Blue and this image came out, I would say exactly that. Brittany Venti would look like not a very nice person, and that would be the end of it. However, sometimes where there's smoke, there's actually fire. So instead of doing that, she ended up using her position, and apparently she's somewhat connected over at Twitter, as Elon Musk has retweeted her before and all that, to get this image taken down as a non-consensual image. Now, again, this was something that was in a public music video that Elijah Blue, as an adult, agreed to be in, and in no way, shape, or form was a private, non-consensual image. This wasn't a revenge adult content situation. This was something that she was in that, again, was available on YouTube, and I don't even think the original video had an age restriction, because while she's wearing skimpy clothing, it's something that is not super ridiculously over the top like other music videos of the modern era. Like, compared to normal society, it's definitely sexualized, but compared to music videos, it's actually pretty tame by those standards. So Brittany Venti ends up getting locked out of her account under the premise that she needs to remove the image, delete the tweet, in order to have it restored. So in solidarity, Jeremy from The Quartering posted the same image and actually had the same result. And this, again, started a firestorm of controversy because once you start censoring people on the internet.com, people are going to start paying attention. And when somebody seems like they're on your team, but then they're doing all of this, it brings up a bunch of red flags. Now, it was at this point in time when Jeremy from The Quartering, somebody that I like and actually get along with, I actually recently bought some of his coffee brand coffee. It's not bad, by the way. You should, you should probably go get some if you're interested in it. Just give it a try. I got into this story. I started looking into it. However, I wasn't ready to post videos or anything like that because, again, I had no context for who Elijah Blue was, the Streisand effect working its impacts because I didn't know who she was, but I knew she censored somebody, and that led me down the rabbit hole to look into this person's past. And from what I can tell from the various threads on the internet.com, it appears that Elijah Blue's story has a bunch of holes in it. It appears that Elijah Blue's timeline absolutely makes no sense. There are points in time where she claims that she was 17 and being human trafficked. However, it turns out she was actually 21 years old and featured on the show Blind Date. Now, I'm not showing you a bunch of clips of Elijah Blue due to the fact that she's hitting people with all of these privacy complaints that are not legitimate. However, I will recommend a friend of the channel, I've recommended her before, Lauren Chen, because she has some of these juicier clips, and I definitely think that you guys should look into it. However, there's one clip in particular that I have to show you, because remember, Elijah Blue is supposedly this expert in human trafficking. I was trafficked on Twitter as well. So there's been three profiles to my knowledge that my former abusers made to traffic me on Twitter. I didn't realize because I kind of just signed up for Twitter in uh, late 2019. So it was like the one of the last few days of 2019 I signed up for Twitter. What, what does that mean that they traffic you on Twitter? How can someone traffic you if they're not in contact with you? Yeah, so the way that that was working, I didn't know about the, about the profiles existing because I wasn't on Twitter and I wasn't looking for them. Uh, the way that my former abusers were doing it is that it was going back to my Instagram. The Twitter accounts were linking back to my Instagram and they were trafficking me off Instagram, Backpage, um, you know, Sugar Daddy websites. I mean, it, it, all, whatever type of internet trafficking is what was happening. I'll go into more detail. So it looks like a profile. Um, in my particular case, the profiles look like profiles that would be me but trying to entice business to sell me, bringing it back to my Instagram where they were doing business. Um, fortunately, in my particular case, there are no nude images or videos of me on Twitter. Thank God, right now. <laughs> the day is young, I guess. But, um, but it would go back to my Instagram and that's how they would traffic me, sell me without my full consent and without my knowledge. When I joined Twitter, uh, an ex-boyfriend actually pointed out the first uh, profile after I reported it to Twitter, it took them three and a half months to take it down. The second profile took five days. They actually took it while I was on my way to do my, they took it down while I was on my uh, way to do my interview with Tim, with Tim Cast. And, uh, 
And then the third profile, the platform has refused. Now that clip is really weird and really odd. And maybe there's more context to it that makes this not the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But it appears from that clip alone that Elijah Blue seems to be conflating human trafficking, which is forced sex slavery or white slavery, as some people would call it, with being catfished or used as part of a catfishing scheme. Honestly, I can't make heads or tails of why this is somehow human trafficking and distinct from catfishing based on what she's saying. And by the way, full disclosure, this is actually the first clip ever that I heard which actually had Elijah Blue talking in it. I've never heard this woman speak, and let's just say I am not impressed by her cadence or anything like that, nor am I impressed by her conflation of what appears to be a catfishing scheme with human trafficking. Also, you may have noticed that I blacked out her side of the screen, which is unfortunate because I would want you to see her body language in how she's describing this, but again, privacy complaint and all that, and I don't think you can actually file a privacy complaint related to the voice alone, which is why I'm trying to slip this one clip in there so you guys can see it. Now again, there's like a TimCast affiliation here, and people are throwing a lot of shade at Tim Pool for not breaking this down, not talking about this, and all of that, and there's rumors related to Jeremy having his appearance cancelled on TimCast IRL, but as the quartering has stated repeatedly, he's actually the one who cancelled the appearance, and his cancellation of that appearance has nothing to do with this situation, and it was well before this situation, and it appears that Tim Pool, since he knows Eliza and one of his journalists on staff really likes her, is trying to do this big piece that will break down this whole situation, but in reality, I do think that it is right for some people to be upset with Tim for not at least taking a stand against the censorship. Look, there may be a logical explanation for all the clips that are circulating around the internet.com. Elijah Blue may not be this Jack Murphy-esque grifter figure or something like that. She may be the legitimate victim of human trafficking and her story while incoherent and messed up in the timeline in multiple different ways may have a rational explanation for why that is but the thing is at this moment in time that's not my primary issue I don't care about what she does or anything like that I care about the fact that friends of mine and people that I don't know and people that hate me because remember Brittany Vindy hates me based on not following me on Twitter because that's totally how that works are getting censored and getting restricted and might ultimately end up losing their accounts based on the fact that Elijah Blue doesn't like that people are criticizing her on the internet. We can separate every single thing out and we can go through the allegations one by one in order to determine what's true, but in reality, the core of the issue for me is not this person's individual personal story. I don't care about that. I didn't know her before and I will likely forget about her after this whole controversy is over, but it's the fact that she's trying to censor people that are looking into it, damaging their careers, and I believe somebody called Yellow Flash is among those that have been hit by this person. So regardless of your feelings about Elijah Blue, regardless of your feelings about any of the people that she was looking into, I find it absolutely disgusting that once again, somebody was able to rise up to some level of notoriety using the alternative media, the distinctly anti-censorship alternative media and is now using those tools of censorship that she gained and built up through notoriety that she got from these type of creators in order to silence her detractors. This is not what I'm about. This is not what you should be about. If this is supposedly about her being a true advocate for the victims of human trafficking, then she should spend a lot less time focusing on censoring people who are showing clips of her from music videos and from her appearance on Blind Date. And finally, what I want to close with is the fact that people need to be weary of these people who focus on these no-brainer issues. Oftentimes, I would make fun of Philip DeFranco on this channel for having no opinions at all whatsoever for years and years and years playing the moderate but then when an issue like somebody hurting little children in an adult way came up 
he would have an extreme opinion like light the pedos on fire. Now, the reason I criticized DeFranco for that is not because I felt bad for the child predators. It was because it's one of the most cowardly things that you can do to have no positions or principles on anything controversial, but then get on board as like the extra go hard for a no brainer issue in order to make it seem like you're taking a stand and this is where you really draw the line as if 98% of the population of the country that you're in of your audience aren't totally on board with you and in that case it's like 99.9% on board with him so you have somebody who's like i'm against human trafficking congratulations nobody is on the other side of that issue that's allowed to build herself up based on the fact that she's standing on this pile of virtue on an issue that again almost nobody is on the other side of that issue that honestly on its own should not be something that allows you to build yourself up into sacred status because this is a no-brainer issue and honestly when this kind of thing happens time and time again and it blows up in your face you start to lose faith in people who are not only promoting these people and interviewing them and all that but in the people who are consuming this content because this is like basic stuff that should not get you to that level and yet time and time again it does and then it blows up in again people's faces but hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, then show them by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social medias. Support the people that got banned and are getting privacy stuff against them. I'll try to link them in the description as I find them. This has been me talking about the Eliza Blue situation. Till next time.